Our next uh, man is Matt Redman. He's a worship leader. He's a young, enthusiastic young man who loves God and is touching thousands of people through his worship. Let's hear Matt's heart. Because I, I don't really think it's a natural talent thing. I can't read music, you know. I'm, I've tried and I, you know, it's like in double dutch to me, you know. So I, I just, just play and sing whatever comes out of my heart, you know. And Matt might be singing someone else's song. It might be writing a song yourself and uh, so you just do whatever comes natural and be real and, and worship and um, you know what comes out comes out you know it's for the Lord anyway so I don't want to be a you know I'm, I wouldn't even say I'm a musician in many senses I, I use music to lead worship you know first and foremost I'm a worship leader and that's my priority and um, so it seems to be that music's a great way of leading worship so that's why I want to learn about music and and use it um, so that as best possible when uh, we can when we do it we can help people to enter into relationship with God when you're worshiping with music it's a great way of coming in and engaging with God and um, expressing yourself you know music's a great communicator it has been through the ages you know through history many cultures and everything you know they even say now that when they play um, music to cows when they get in milk that it makes them more productive so I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, music's a powerful thing. It's a, it's a really special communicator and a great part of God's blessing and His presence in this world. And um, so, because of that, you know, um, you you can use it to to worship Him. So, worship in one sense is music, and in another sense, the Lord says, you know, that uh, if if you if you're just singing the songs, you're not living the life. It doesn't mean anything to me. So it's like a balance. I'm, I'm quite private in a lot of ways, you know, I like some space to myself and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, I know, I'm not a natural person at being up the front, but, I, you know, I love to worship God and, and uh, we, so we just get up, you know, me and the band and we just worship God through music and you're hoping that people will follow you and, and join in and, uh, you know, you don't have to be some sort of dynamic leader. I hardly ever speak up the front, you know, I, don't, I think uh, it's not very helpful <laughs> for, you know, it's all right, but I think let's just get on with it, you know, let's just worship. I think that a good worship leader is someone who leads um, visibly and strongly enough so that people actually follow, but not so strongly that they themselves become the focus. That's the wonderful thing about it. You can, you can be at a conference and worship with thousands of people and a massive kicking band, you know, or you can be in a little home group, you know, six of you worshiping with a guitar. And um, the Lord's there, you know, and He's listening and He's hearing every melody and every lyric. I've just written a song recently and it's talking about my treasure will be your intimacy, you know, and, and just I want to know the Lord, I want to come close to Him and, you know, it's nice to be trusted with some of the things that we are, but I don't want it ever to be a distraction, you know. Um, Jesus Himself said, you know, to one church, you know, you're doing a lot of good things, good deeds, hard work, you're persevering, but, you know, you've forsaken your first love, you know. And he, he said to them, you know, remember the things that you did at first and now repent and, and do those things again, you know. Remember the height from which you've fallen. And really always aware of just trying to make sure that I'm, I'm trying to press on to know the Lord and love the Lord just as I always did. And in a sense, the music isn't the most important thing. Um, it's the heart. And you, if you have no heart and you try and dress it up with music, it won't be a powerful experience. Uh, you've got to have the heart and then the music's like a bonus. I've got a song at the moment writing called Intimacy, uh, which is just saying, you know, as uh, my treasure will be your intimacy. I want, Lord, I treasure to know you, you know. As Paul says in uh, Philippians, he says that, you know, I consider all else worthless. It's just rubbish compared to that of knowing Jesus Christ. You know, the whole thing of prophecy in the end is to do with revealing Jesus. You know, the spirit of um, prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And uh, so as if it's revealing Jesus to some degree, I, I guess it would be prophetic. Worship, is mu in terms of music, has been getting more and more passionate and just full of plenty of raw, holy passion, you know. Um, it's exciting, you know, there's some real life in it. And um, I guess it's going to carry on in that direction um, and hopefully, you know, become even more sort of culturally relevant in terms of the music. You know, we're, we're all seem to play catch up, you know. Um, there was times in the past where the, the church would lead, you know, the, the society in terms of the music and um, maybe we'll even see a bit of that happening, that would be wonderful.